Welcome to the New Heights Show on Education. This is your host, Pamela Clark, and you're listening to Education in the News. Uh, we are going to be covering a lot of different news topics from around the U.S. and the world. And let's get right into it. There's always a lot to cover and never not a, never enough time to cover it all. So thank you for joining me and let's get started. California sees a decline in FAFSA app applications. California has experienced a 5% decline in the number of 12th grade students completing the free application for federal student aid. Data from the National FAFSA Tracker shows that Patrick Perry, the California Student Aid Commission's Director of Policy, Research, and Data, said the decline is concerning and attributed to it to challenges during the coronavirus pandemic. The full story was picked up by EdSource, if you want to look it up. This next report that I have for you is from Ohio Ed Updates from State and Local Education News. The Columbus Dispatch reports that Ghana Jefferson hires Scott Gooding as district's new treasurer. The Gahana Jefferson Public Schools has hired Westerville resident Scott Gooding as its new treasurer. The school board approved a three-year contract with Gooding on January 20th. That's effective starting March the 1st to replace My Mike Berlingo. He resigned January 18th. Gooding, 48, also will serve as a part-time consultant to the district in the coming weeks at a cost of seventy-six ninety-two per hour. Wow. Okay. Um, and then Sandusky Register reports that Clyde school officials take state job. Clyde Green Spring Schools will soon undergo a leadership change. During this week's public meeting, board members accepted Superintendent Dennis Haft's uh, resignation. He's leaving to become the state coordinator for the Ohio Department of Education Schools that Work program in Columbus. Haft, who has led the school district for almost six years, was hired July of 2016. Before that, he was an elementary school principal in Brunswick schools. And Wooster Daily Record reports the seven area schools get STEM grants to boost tech learning. More than 150 Ohio schools, including seven in Ashland, Holmes, and Wayne counties, are getting a financial boost thanks to a partnership between Ohio STEM Learning Network and Battelle. Grants are, were awarded to two schools in Wayne County, Chippewa Junior and Senior High and Northwestern Elementary. Holmes County also had two schools with Heeland High and Middle and West Holmes Middle, each getting some money, and three schools in Ashland County, Ashland Christian, Loudonville High, and Black River High received grant funding. And Cleveland.com reports that Chagrin Falls Seniors chosen as Chagrin Valley Rotary Students of the Month. The Chagrin Falls High School seniors, Ren Operman and Ann Mills, have been selected, selected as the Chagrin Valley Rotary Students of the Month for December and January, respectively. Both students were chosen based on their leadership and service qualities that they have displayed in the community. And this is from a Middle Web Smart Brief. Hacking hardware helps students learn how it works. Encouraging middle school students to tinker with hardware helps them learn to think creatively and gives them a greater understanding of how the technology works, says Rick Loon, an EdTech developer in Hong Kong. In this article, Loon describes an example of this type of activity in which students participated in a hackathon to redesign a toy train. You can look up the entire article 
on Edutopia, and it's titled Hacking Hardware Helps Students Learn How It Works. And um, Education Week reported that educators or teachers are struck in a hypervigilant mode or hypervigilance mode. Teachers have been in a hypervigilance mode since the pandemic brought the closure of schools, writes Katie Farber, an educator in Vermont. In this commentary, Farber describes the constant state of hypervigilance and stress while trying to balance teaching and learning with healthy and health and safety, as well as juggling additional roles as parents and caretakers. And in EdSurge, they report that a study shows the students' well-being suffering amid pandemic. Children have been largely spared from the worst direct health effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Harvard University researchers say that they found other effects on students' well-being stemming from school disruptions and remote learning. In this interview, the two researchers, they share that with their, what their data shows about the effects on the students' behavioral health. I wouldn't put much stock into this, though, um, but you can go on Ed Surge and look that article up and kind of read it for yourselves. Um, just a moment. Game style aptitude test uncovers skills, career options. The career planning U Science, that's one word, U, Y O U, and then Science Connected, Brain Game program is used to help students in Durango, Colorado, uncover skills, challenge self assumptions, and reveal possible career options. Curriculum and Assessment Director Dylan Connell says, quote, it's like shine this light on the greatness that they are and what unique skills and talents that they have that are going to fit really well for them, Cornell says, or Connell says. Um, the Durango Herald in Colorado reported the full story on that. The Salem News in um, Missouri said that uh, the district math team realigns with math curricula. A team of Missouri educators, middle school math teacher Heidi Ross, high school math teacher Lisa McCarthy, and assistant principal Tori Snitker, a former math teacher, worked together to fine-tune district math curricula so earlier courses better prepare students for the next one. They also renamed the algebra classes so counselors can be more easily can e I'm sorry can more easily guide students course selections okay just a moment I gotta switch again okay this is from the foundation center and let's see here uh, Mellon awards $16.1 million for social justice and humanities curricula. Three-year grants were awarded through the Humanity, Humanities for All Times Initiative to, K, or to, I'm sorry, to 12 liberal arts colleges in support of newly developed curricula that both instructs students in methods of humanities, practice, and demonstrate the relevance of those methods to students' broader social justice pursuits. And college students value free speech question its security, study finds. While the vast majority of students, 83%, said that they believe the First Amendment protects people like them, just 5% of black students said that they feel that the First Amendment protects people like them a great deal. A drop of 20 percentage points since 2019. Just 
moment. I got to switch again. Okay, this is more from Ohio Ed Update, state and local news. Okay, Middletown schools leader as a finalist in Cincinnati Public School Superintendent Search. The Cincinnati Inquirer reported that the Cincinnati Public School Board announced three finalists in its superintendent search late Thursday morning. The person selected for the position will lead Ohio's largest, third largest public school system, serving approximately 36,000 students in 65 schools. And Dayton NBC2 uh, reports that Uber Heights City Schools announces interim superintendent. Uber Heights City Schools has named an interim superintendent. Kelly Spivey as, has been named the interim superintendent for Uber Heights City Schools, according to the district. Morio uh, Basora, the previous superintendent, announced his reg- resignation from the position on Wednesday, January 12th. And the Warren Tribune Chronicle reports that Niles District released from fiscal emergency. It was a day of celebrating as the Niles City School District on Thursday officially was removed from the state fiscal emergency. Members of the Nile Board of Education and School Administration joined the Niles Financial Planning and Supervision Commission to hear officially from the State Auditor Keith Faber that they have been removed from the first fiscal emergency designation. The Akron Beacon Journal reported that a local group was hired for Cuyahoga Falls School Superintendent Search. The same organization that handled the search for the school district's interim superintendent has been selected to find the permanent leader. The Board of Education has hired Summit Educational Service Center, so known as ESC, to conduct the search for the district's new superintendent. Summit ESC was selected by the school board after members heard presentations from representatives of the ESC as well as Ohio School Boards Association and Ray and Associates. And Wooster Daily Record reports that LeBron James, Crypto.com, team up to help Akron kids learn more about technological careers. They have already learned firsthand about how things drive and soar from Goodyear, how toys are made and designed by Little Tykes, and now Akron students participating in his I Promise program are going to venture into the metaverse. NBA star LeBron James has announced a new partnership between Crypto.com and his namesake foundation to help Akron kids, some 1,600 in all, to learn firsthand not only how cryptocurrency works, but the technology behind it and all the ways that will impact their lives and potential career paths in the future. Cleveland Fox 8 reports that she's an angel, in quotations, local high school student helped save elderly woman's life. A Lorain County high school student is being commended for her actions that please say saved the life of an elderly woman. The 83-year-old victim slipped and fell off the porch of her home in Amherst while trying to retrieve a package. The woman suffered a severe shoulder injury and could not move. Bella Della Pole, or Pole, a junior at the Amherst Still High School, was on her way home when she spotted the victim. She called 911 and grabbed a blanket to keep Cook warm until help arrived. Okay, this next one is from Education Week. It says that NH students, New Hampshire students, earn credits for learning outside of the class. Students in New Hampshire can earn high school, high school credits for learning that takes place outside the classroom, says the Architect of Learn Everywhere program and the state's Education Commissioner, Frank Eidelblatt. 
In this interview, Idleblot describes how the program works to provide more options for students and dis districts. So, like I said, you can um, look up Education Week for the entire story on that. CBC News reported that a Holocaust survivor shares stories with students. Ruth Steinfeld, an 88-year-old Holocaust survivor in Texas, is telling her story to students to ensure that history of the genocide is known as fewer survivors are alive to talk about it. Steinfeld recently told high school students, I want you to know this really happened, and it happened to me. Um, for your information as well, if you go on our uh, our radio show, radio.newheightseducation.org, you can look up um, an interview with Inga Orabacher, and she was a Holocaust survivor that we interviewed a few years back. If you want to hear her story, it was quite remarkable. Inga Orabacher, you should look her up. Just a moment. There's a lot of repeated stuff that I have to scroll through. Okay, study shows, supposedly, this is from Helio. Study shows that teen sleep improves amid the pandemic lockdowns. Or amid the pandemic lockdowns. Research published in JAMA. J-A-M-A, -A, Network Open, found that the lockdown procedures during the first wave of COVID-19 pandemic in Switzerland were associated with longer sleep durations, wherein participants slept a medium of 75 minutes longer on school days. The findings, based on the online survey of close to 9,000 high school students, highlighted that longer sleep durations was tied to less consumption of caffeine and alcohol, and better health-related quality of life. But these findings were offset by a rise of in, rise in depressive symptoms. Okay, here's another story from KCAU-TV in Sioux City, Iowa. And it's titled, Fourth Graders Enjoy Surprise Messages for 100th Day. Letters from all over the country, including messages from Chicago clubs and Kansas City Chiefs, poured into an Iowa classroom in honor of the 100th day of school. Fourth grade teacher Jen Conrad requested that 100 letters to, to surprise students and celebrate the milestone. In the West... Westerly Sun in Rhode Island reports that kindness challenge brings students and staff together. Students in Richmond, Rhode Island, decorated doors, created paper chains, listed kind acts, and wrote thank you notes to community members as part of the school's participation in the Great Kindness Challenge. Other activities included daily outfit themes, kindness challenges, and, quote, compliment high fives to keep the kind thoughts rolling without, physic without the physical contact. A lot of repeats again. Okay, just a moment. Okay, this is from district administration. Let me get the the um, website. It's districtadministration.com if you're interested. And the article is titled School Librarian Skills and Spotlight Amid the Pandemic. So um, it says the pandemic was has highlighted how school librarians have helped devise digital instructional strategies provided support to teachers and students, and maintained libraries as familiar spaces for students 
amid the changing classroom environments. Librarians shared these and other successes and challenges during the Library Media Specialist Summit at a recent education conference. In the 74 reports that some schools pivot away from the contact tracing, some states and school districts are ending the COVID-19 contact contact tracing programs in schools in favor of other approaches such as home test kits and system and symptom monitoring. You know, the kind of the same thing. Uh, extensive contact tracing and associated tests and stay procedures are not adding significant value as a mitigation strategy, despite the demand they place on the time of school health staff and school staff at large. Massachusetts Education Commissioner Jeff Lee Riley said in a recent memo. Okay, I think we might have shared this one before. Um, this is from Smart Brief on Special Education. It says that art program offers creative sensory support. Students with disabilities create clay sculptures, paintings, and other art projects through a program at the Eastern Iowa Arts Academy. Classes offer not just a creative outlet, but necessary tactile therapy for students. That's Amy Shoemaker, a teacher at Washington High School. The full story was picked up by the Gazette at Cedar Rapids, Marion, Iowa. Okay, here's another one from New York City. Just a moment. You can check this out at NY for New York, um, but it's just NY period chalkbeat.org. This says New York City to open new school for students with dyslexia, Bank says. New York City officials are planning to open a new school focused on serving students with dyslexia, Chancellor David Banks said Wednesday. Banks made the announcement during a virtual education focused state budget hearing. After Bronx Assemblyman Michael Benedito asked for Banks' thoughts on screening young children for learning disabilities, he said, quote, I've met with many other advocates around the city. We've worked very closely around the creation of a school, specifically a public school, that will be dedicated specifically for kids with dyslexia. Be the first time that we've had that in New York City, Banks said. And so you'll hear in the coming weeks more about the new school. Banks added that Mayor Eric Adams wants such a school in every borough. An education department spokesperson declined to offer more details, including where the schools might be located, what grades it would serve, and how students would be admitted. If the new school comes to fruition, the it would be the first district operated school and the second public school in New York City to focus specifically on students with dyslexia. The first is Bridge Pre 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 Preparatory Charter School, which opened in 2019. You can read more about that by following that link I had shared with you if you're interested. And in Education Week, and Smart Brief Education and Chalkbeat all reported that Cardona applauds teachers and outlines education goals. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona said in a speech that the country's immediate education goal should include improving student connect connectedness, lifting teaching, teacher morale, and finding ways for meaningful family engagement. Quote, we can collectively lead our nation's healing and lift our country to a level never before seen, Cardona said.
And the WTVF TV in Nashville, Tennessee reported that bill calls for later start time for Tennessee schools. If a proposed bill passes, Tennessee middle schools will not be allowed to open before 8 a.m. and not before 8.30 a.m. for high schools. The shift is particularly important for students with disabilities, says parents and advocate Anna Thorson, as earlier start times can have negative effects for these students. And in San Diego, Union Tribune reports that California District adopts general education for all policy. You can learn all about this um, at Sandy, it's S-A-N-D-I-E, and then GoUnionTribune.com, all one word. And it's titled um, Poe Unified Sees Success with Programs to Integrate Special Education Students. It says that Tate Julian, a sixth grade student at Twin Peaks Middle School, had lunch with a new friend recently, he and his friends invited a boy named Cole, who was an aide for his aut who has an aide for his autism, to set with them. Quote, He's a nice kid, Tate said. Me and my family plan to do it daily. This is the type of interaction Poway Unified School District officials were hoping for when they started the inclusive practices program a few years ago. <clears throat> Since then, the district has adopted a general education for all policy. Schools have shut down their daily classes, which remove students with special education needs from the general education settings. And special education students who have been bused for specific coursework at other schools are now going to school in their neighborhood. The initiative prompted a mindset shift from the administration to the classroom. Tate's science teacher, Amy Hellebrett, a general education teacher, said the program has been extremely productive for special education students and their peers. And again, you can follow that link to read more about it. And there's a picture as well. Okay, let me check. I think it's about time for a commercial break. Yep. Um, so I'll be right back. Right now, right now, you might be, you might struggling, be struggling through your classes or even failing them. You might be worried that you may not finish high school. There might have even been a thought that you may not be smart enough. Well, the New Heights Educational Group begs to differ. We not only think you are smart enough, but with our help, you will complete your high school diploma. The New Heights Educational Group strives to improve your academic success through its tutoring services. To learn more, please visit newheightseducation.org and contact us. New Heights Educational Group educational resources to help reach your goals. Welcome back to the New Heights Show on Education. This is your host, Pamela Clark, and you're listening to Education in the News. Let's get right back into it. Still a lot to cover. This is from the Foundation Center, and they report that $25 million gift to expand Arizona State's Global Management School. The funding will support an accredited online global management and entrepreneurship certificate program that consists of five courses available in 40 languages as part of the Francis and Dion Najafi 100 Million Learners Global Initiative. And Google announced support for digital skills training for Latinos. Google is expanding its partnership with the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities and will award $2 million in grants to Latino organizations as well as $5 million in grants from Google.org. And Southern Methodist University receives $50 million for a sports complex. The largest gift in the history of SMU athletes will support a $100 million campaign for new, for the new 192,500-square-foot Gary Weber End Zone Complex at the Gerald J. Ford Stadium. Just a moment. Get to the next one again. Here we are. 
All right. Um, Mott Foundation commits $25 million to improve public health in Flint, the largest single grant in the history of the College of Human Medicine at Michigan State University, would create an endowment to fund additional public health faculty, increased academic research, and boister community health co collaborations. And personal connections drive donor motivation report finds. Findings reveal donor motivations and expectations based on three new components of research in the Giving Environment series. A research project at the Indiana University Lilly Family School of Philanthropy funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And new skills, or not new skills, new schools venture fund receives a $35 million gift from Mackenzie Scott, part of the tranche of gifts that Scott awarded in December, the single largest contribution to new schools, that's one word, new schools put together, will enable the organization to continue to provide unrestricted capital in support of educators and innovators who are reimagining learning in the United States. And in Ed Utopia, they ask the question, is unconscious bias affecting grading? Some degree of unconscious bias often factors into student grading. But David Quinn, an assistant professor at the University of Southern California, Rosier School of Education, says there are strategies to help ease its effects. In this article, Quinn suggests that teachers have other educators weigh in on their grading and establish a rubric with grading criteria. In the News Literacy Project, um, is aims new tools. I'm sorry, new tools aims to strengthen news literacy. The nonpartisan nonprofit news literacy project has launched a tool for teachers to help them fight disinformation and strengthen news literacy. The tool announced during National News Literacy Week is aimed in part at highlighting the importance of the First Amendment and the value of the free press. A lot of repeats here again. Hold on. Uh, this is from K to 12 Dive, and it says lawsuits take aim at school funding formulas. Lawsuits unfolding in several states may have complications for school funding. Among them are a lawsuit in Pennsylvania that asserts that the state's poorest residents bore the brunt of budget cuts and another in Washington state that asserts school funding worsens, worsens inequality. And WTVF-TV in Nashville, Tennessee reports that a bill calls for later start times for Tennessee schools. We already, kind of, we already read some of this. Um, yeah, we won't repeat all of that. Let's see here. And scholarships mix-up affects two universities in Michigan. This was reported by the New York Times, and it says two Michigan universities in recent weeks incorrectly told high schoolers they'd been awarded scholarships. Oakland University issued a correction email to 5,500 students who were told they had received a scholarship, and Central Michigan University issued a similar correction before deciding it would cover the tuition for 58 high school seniors. Oh, wow, all right. <laughs> okay, here's some more Ohio state and local news. Okay, this is from the Warren Tribune Chronicle, and it says Warren awarded funds to buy buses. The Warren City School District has been awarded $234,090 to purchase and replace three buses. The Ohio Department of Education selected Warren, a 
recipient of the School Bus Purchase Award. House Bill 110 provided $50 million for school districts to replace old school buses as part of the department's school bus purchase program for the 2021 to the 2023 school years. Any bus a district pur purchases with these funds must replace a bus that is currently used for regular route service. And the Akron Beacon, Beacon Journal, excuse me, said that uh, got a math question after midnight. Akron Public Schools adds 24-7 homework help hotline. Whatever the reason, when a student calls the APS Plus tutoring hotline or asks for a Google Meet video chat, an Akron teacher is there to listen and help. The district launched the program last school year. As students were in the midst of a full calendar year of learning online due to the pandemic, the program employs Akron teachers to provide tutoring and other support to teachers who call in between 4 and 7 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and on Saturdays, a guidance counselor also is available during those times to assist students with any mental health or other social or emotional needs. The counselor can connect families with resources for any needs that they have. The Canton Repository announced that there are several scholarships available. Junior Achievement of North Central Ohio is offering scholarships for graduating seniors to university, trade school, apprenticeship, or on-the-job training directly into the workforce. With K-12 programming through 15 counties, including Stark, Junior Achievement of North Central Ohio and local businesses team up to teach students the financial and career skills they need to navigate the future. Eligible students must be current seniors in Stark County, have participated in at least one Junior Achievement program and at any grade level, and have a GPA of at least 2.5. Application deadline is at 4 p.m. on March the 14th. The Springfield News Sun reports that Northeastern Superintendent school construction sites continue to progress. The projects in the Northeastern local schools continue to progress, the district superintendent says. The district is building new campuses for Northeastern and Kenton Ridge, spending $42 million on Northeastern site and $57 million on the Kenton Ridge building. The Northeastern site is expected to open this fall, and the Kenton Ridge site is anticipated to open in 2023. We're going to take another quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Hello, listeners. If you're enjoying the New Heights show on education and want to support or donate to our organization, please visit www.newheightseducation.org. And while you're there, check out our online store. Welcome back to the New Heights Show on Education. This is your host, Pamela Clark, and we're covering news stories from around the world. So let's get right back into it. This is from Smart Brief on Special Education, and it says that uh, teens with disabilities gain skills and help others. Teenagers with disabilities learn life skills in the 12 plus program at Gaither High School in Tampa, Florida. Program participants who are recent graduates make and sell aprons and pillows and sell and I'm sorry, sew and fill bags of necessities for people who are homeless. The entire story was reported on by WFTS TV in Tampa, Florida. This is from the Chicago Tribune, and it says, Program to help students transition uh, to adult life. The After 
22 project is a community effort developed by Chicago area leaders to help students with disabilities transition to adult life. The program, with courses offered by Daily College and support from the Lester and Ros- Rosalie and Ixter uh, Center and other groups, seek to help up to 20 students during the first school year. During its first school year, excuse me. This is from EDM, and it says, Accessible Instrument Operated with Eye Movements. Musicians and students with disabilities can play music with their eyes using eye harp. And that's one word, E-Y-E-H-A-R-P. The instrument tracks users' head and eye movements to create music and has settings to replicate the sounds of more than 20 instruments. And the Colombian or Columbia Missourian reported that cats may have therapeutic benefit for children with the ASD. Parents of children with autism spectrum disorder say that their children became more sociable and empath- empathetic and exhibited fewer concerning behaviors within 18 weeks of adopting a cat. And the cats in the study also appeared to thrive. Researchers at the Missouri University College of Veterinary Medicine's Research Center for Human-Animal Interactions selected cats from an animal shelter for families of children with autism spectrum disorder. Compared parent-reported behaviors with reports from control families and monitored the cats for signs of stress. And in Lansing, Michigan, um, there's an Autism History Museum opening in Meridian Mall. And let's see when the date. I know it's in February. Uh, February 4th was ribbon cutting. And let's see. going to see what parts of this I want to share with you. I guess it'd probably be better for you to look it up because there's some pictures and um, yeah, you can just kind of read about it, but it's on LansingStateJournal.com if you're interested in learning more about that museum. Sounds pretty interesting, I think. Just a moment, I have to um, bring up the next one. Okay, school ransomware criminals now pressuring families and staff. This was reported by NBC News. It says criminals are using data gleaned from school and district cyber attacks to threaten students, families, and staff with the spread of their social security numbers and other data if they don't pressure the school into paying a ransom. Cybersecurity experts say one parent interviewed said his school should have told parents their information had been stolen and warned them to protect their data. <laughs> wow, right? A lot of repeats again. Yep, a lot of repeats. It's one thing about these that. We get so many reports from so many people that sometimes they're repeated. So, All right, this is more from state and local education news. This is from Youngstown Business Journal. It says Northeast Ohio Impact Academy wins $5,000 STEM classroom grant. A $5,000 grant will allow Campbell City Schools Northeast Ohio Impact Academy to create and expand sustainable STEM learning projects at the school. The grant is through the Ohio STEM Learning Network Classroom Grant Program, funded by the Columbus-based Patel. The Academy Race for Impact Project provides students with hands-on experience, problem-solving skills, according to a release. And I know I kind of mentioned this earlier, this program anyways. Okay, so... The next one I have for you is from Cincinnati 
CBS 12. Local school district supports Sam Hubbard Foundation. A local school district is celebrating the Bengals' journey to the Super Bowl by giving back to the community. Southwest Local School District announced Monday that it will be raising money for the Sam Hubbard Foundation. The nonprofit was created by Bengals Defensive and Sam Hubbard to combat food insecurity in Southwest Ohio. Students in the district are encouraged to bring in money to donate to their first bell teacher if they go to junior high or high school, or to homeroom teacher if they go to an elementary school. Cleveland.com reports that Rocky River students head out to the community to gain work experience. A former teacher in the Rocky River City Schools has taken on a new job and title. Diane Boland, who was retired in June after 37 years, was asked to come back to work on a program that gets kids out in the community for experience, for work experience. It is part of the West Shore Career Tech Program, it's a consortium, said Boland. Now the district's transition program development specialist, program coordinator Terry McNeely, also a teacher, is in the learning resource services coordinator and intervention specialist. The idea is that I reach out to various community businesses and ask if there is a need for our students to provide work-related skills in their businesses. Bear with me for a moment. Uh, this is from Smart Brief on Ed. Education and it says even novice esports coach can build teams. Belonging. Teachers who aren't familiar with esports need not shy away from creating a school team. California science teacher Ad Alex Worden writes in this commentary. A once novice esports coach, Worden explains the basics of getting a team going, including including <laughs> purposeful purposeful practices and ways to help students coach themselves. And the Lima News in Lima, Ohio, reports that Ohio District launches mobile library, Hotspot. An Ohio school district will soon have a new library, mobile library, and Wi-Fi hotspot to bring educational resources directly to families. The Spartan Ride is a refurbished miniature bus that will also include free books for students. That's neat. What a great idea. And Tennessee School District says that food prices are up from 7% to 45%. Prices for some food items have increased between 7% to 45%, causing Anderson County Schools in Tennessee to spend approximately $150,000 more on food this school year, according to Margaret Burrell, the district's nutrition director, funding from the USDA approximately $125,000 will help reimburse some of the added expenses. The story was picked up by WVLT-TV in Knoxville, Tennessee, if you want to check it out. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Okay, this is from WMGTV um, in Macon, Georgia, and it says Georgia District adopts ID scanners on school buses. A school district in Georgia now asks students to scan an ID card when using the school buses beginning today. The ID cards, which, can, which also can be used in school cafeterias, are to ensure students are getting on the right bus. Or tracking them. Hmm. Or both, right? All right. Just a moment again. We've got to switch over here. We've covered a lot today, haven't we, already? Let's see how much more time we have. All right. We've got some more time for some more stories. Um... This is from St. Albans Messenger in Vermont. 
And it says uh, that Vermont Students Staff Joined Kindness Challenge. We kind of mentioned this one already, but it says students and staff at the Swanton School in Vermont participated in a week-long challenge focused on sharing random acts of kindness. The national challenge, which involves activities such as writing notes, appreciation for people, giving them flowers, or simply smiling, added one more task to everyone's workload, but it offered a much-needed boost, teacher Nicole Jamison said. This is from Chalk Beat in Providence, Rhode Island. It says, educator, learn students' pronoun names. Teachers can help build more inclusive classrooms by taking time to learn students' chosen and preferred pronoun names, writes Morel Burt, a Providence, Rhode Island educator who identifies as non-binary. In this commentary, Burt shares how to empower students by asking about pronouns and preferred names that students use. An important process because students learn better when they feel free to be their authentic selves. This is from Williamson Herald Frank in Franklin, Tennessee. It says, schools, book study promotes reading, student bonds. A Tennessee middle school campus-wide book study group meet weekly to promote academic goals and form bonds among the students while reinforcing that reading also happens outside language arts classes, said industrial literacy coach Tequila Cornelius. The student's latest book for discussion is The Cro Crossover, a basketball-themed book by author and poet Kwame Alexander. Okay. Moving on here. Sorry, got a lot of repeats again. I have to switch through. Okay, let's see. Okay, CNBC reports network with colleague, colleagues even in a remote job. It can take more effort to build relationships with colleagues when starting a new remote job, but asking the right questions can help. Here are some suggestions for making the first impression and getting a strong start. You can look that up on CNBC. Um, yeah, a lot of repeats. This is from Forbes, and it says why data skills should be infused in school subjects. Data analytics is expected to produce plentiful and well-paying career opportunities in coming years. PwC's uh, Yushin Sethi said at a Wharton Customer Analytics Forum. Author Cornelia Levy-Benchton asserted that bridging the current big data divide However, will necessitate embedded data skills into a broader range of middle and high school curricula. Okay. Switching again. A lot of repeated stuff. Okay, so we're going to keep moving forward. Let's see what we find here. Sorry. It's just a lot to cover, and I always have to. 
which I make sure I'm not repeating news articles when I give you guys the, um, you know, as many new ones as I can. More schools adopt mental health days. This is from Ed Surge. It says more school districts are adding mental health days into their calendars. With 65 district-wide mental health closures reported by Burbio, a firm that tracks school schedules. Officials ska- say the closures are tied in some cases to staffing shortages, but also are aimed at supporting mental health and preventing burnout among students and staff. K-12 Dive reports the schools vary in approach to COVID-19 testing. School districts nationwide are taking varied approaches to testing for the coronavirus on campus. Some say they are scaling back, while others appear to be ramping up as officials work to juggle state and national policies, health recommendations, and public sentiment. (laughs) Yeah. And... Uh, The Associated Press reports that more lawsuits are filed over masks in Virginia schools. Two additional lawsuits have been filed regarding Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin's executive order blocking schools from enforcing mask-wearing requirements. In one lawsuit, the parent of children with disabilities say the order runs afoul of the American with Disabilities Act, while The other lawsuit says that Loudoun County School Board has no authority to keep a mask requirement in place. And I know there was a story about that as well, that the students um, had taken in a lot of different um, legal documents for these lawsuits directly into the board. And then this is from Youth Today. I'm not familiar with this outlet. But it says that um, the title of their article here is, Are Students Who Are Homeless Overlooked for Special Ed? Students with disabilities are far more likely to miss out on necessary special education supports and services if they do not have a stable home, says Schoolhouse Connection Executive Director Barbara DeField. A report from the New York City Department of Education noted that early intervention for these students is key to keeping the students in their grade level. Okay, I'm going, we're kind of starting to run out of time. And I know there was some, there were some articles I definitely wanted to share with you. So let me, let me look for that real quick. Uh, It was from a different source than usual. I think it was this one here. Here we go. This is from Academics and Education, and they had uh, quite a few interesting articles I wanted to share with you before the end of today's show. This is from Australia. Um, It says, Australia awards fully funded scholarships to study at the prestigious university in Australia. Uh, The Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade of Australia funds this opportunity try to get some more information on it. Just a moment while I open this. I guess there's like a um, advertisement that they have actually. It says scholarships fully funded for students study in Australia announced and students wishing to undertake bachelor's, master's, and PhD in various fields. Wide variety of subjects is available under the Australian awards. Top universities and institutions are participating in this government opportunity. You can go to, let's see, they have all expenses covered. Um, Well, just go to academics and education, type that into the internet. I know they have reports on Quora.com, Q-U-O-R-A.com, and you can look up academics and education, and then you should see that. And then Wuhan University in China offers scholarships for international students. 
And again, it's a um, advertisement and international students are invited to apply in it's for programs, masters and PhD programs, I should say. And then Heinrich Boll Foundation scholarships are an, an, on offer for all students of the world. A thousand scholarships are available in a wide variety of fields. So the students will study at state or state accredited recognized universities of Germany. I'm getting some more information. That will be offered. Thousand scholarships for selected students will be awarded with attractive funding. Almost all academic fields are available to study under Heinrich Bold Foundation scholarships. Masters and PhD programs are available. So there's that one as well. I think there's one more. Nope, that was, well, wait a minute. Yeah, I think that was it. That was all of those. You can also email us. I'm going to save this one because we save all scholarship information that kind of comes in. So if you can't locate it, you can email me at newheightseducation at yahoo.com and I'll send you a copy of the email. All right. Well, we've covered a lot today. I hope you enjoyed the show. I want to remind you that on Fridays is uh, our show with Onyak. On the Nyan Tibet, who covers youth related topics. Sundays, we have a civil rights show, and then my show always airs on Wednesdays. So, until next time. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Don't forget to rate us and follow us on your podcast player. Check out our show page, radio.newheightseducation.org for monthly announcements and other happenings.